<clears throat> Hi, I'm Jonathan Spiro, and this presentation is about my work to select out sweet or open pollinated corn. I'm going to discuss two varieties uh, I'm developing and the approaches I'm using to choose for sweetness. Top Hat is selected from a single F1 parent. One simple way to make a more modern OP is to choose a good hybrid and dehybridize it or grow it out till it's stable. In 2002, I planted out rows of 16 commercial hybrid sweet corn varieties. I chose Tuxedo. It was the first to germinate as a long husk cover that provides some protection from insects. Tuxedo held up pretty well under weed pressure and produced a fairly consistent two ears per plant. Tuxedo is supposed to uniformly possess the, uni the sugary enhancer gene, so I did not expect sweet lack of sweetness to be an issue. I found, however, in F2 and F3 that many of them were not all that sweet. It may be that the seed I used actually had only one e SE parent. The next year, I again grew Tuxedo. I planted 16 rows, every other row across a field. In each of the 15 alternate rows, I planted a different multicolored corn. Some were from the Grin, some were from Seed Savers Exchange, and some were commercial seed varieties. All of them had red or blue, as well as yellow kernels. I detasseled all of this multicolored corn. The next year, I grew out these 15 crossed by tuxedo lines. With tuxedo providing the pollen, Anasazi made vigorous plants with large ears and large kernels. This cross with Anasazi has led to Tuxana, as well as to yellow and multicolored lines. It is interesting that Tuxana is a white corn selected from a cross between a yellow and a multicolor. The Anastasi corn is not at all uniform. I do not believe that earlier cultures valued uniformity the way we do. I think they consciously selected broadly in order to increase the likelihood of success in extreme weather years. So only some of the Tuxedo F3 was sweet. The Anasazi crust was even less sweet, and some of those weren't sweet at all. Tasting may be the most valuable way to select for sweetness. I used only two ear plants, evaluating the second, secondary ear while leaving the primary ear undisturbed. At first, we used rating sheets with three people tasting each ear, rating it on paper, and making a collective decision of in or out. One year, we did time-delayed tasting in the top hat corn. By harvesting the corn two days before tasting it, we could judge the corn's ability to hold its sweetness. I numbered the two ears on each plant with the same number. I harvested the secondary ears and stored them for two days. Then I labeled paper plates with those numbers and husked the corn onto the numbered plates. I created three sets of 100 ears. I gave each taster 50 stick-on stars with 100 ears to choose from. So the tasters couldn't see each other's votes, we put the star for our chosen ears on the bottom of the plate. Each set had five tasters. We called as in the ones that got three or more stars. The primary ear with the corresponding number was a seed ear. Production tasting. In the Texana, we had 2,000 plants to taste. We had to pick up the pace. The most efficient way we found to do taste testing is with three tasters taking two adjacent rows. The two people on the outside of the rows break off the secondary ear, strip it back, and taste it, keeping track of which plant it came from. Many times that person would make the call of in or out alone and flag the plant if it was a sweeter one. If that person was unsure, if it was a maybe, she hands the ear to the middle person who tastes the ear and makes the call. The middle person is the decider for maybes in both rows, tasting only the ears where the picker asks a second opinion. Three people could taste about 100 ears, 100 plants per hour this way, and we could last maybe three hours before our taste buds totally burned out. The principle behind kernel selection by dry down is that an individual corn kernel with more sugar will lose less water and maintain plumpness for a longer period as dry down begins. <clears throat> so I have the primary ear of selected corn plants marked and left in the field. I also leave some unmarked plants, the ones that lost in the sweetness competition. A week past eating stage, I walk the field, peel back some of those unmarked ears and look to see if any kernels are wrinkled. I repeat this every couple of days until I see some kernels with wrinkles. 
Somewhere between seven and maybe 18 days after peak ripe, wrinkling starts to happen. With the first wrinkling of kernels, when maybe 10 or 15% of the ears have some kernels starting to wrinkle, I harvest all the marked ears. I spread these unhusked ears in a dry place. The 10 to 15% with some wrinkling are ready immediately. I check the others at least every other day by pulling back a little husk to look for wrinkling. As each year begins to show signs of wrinkling on any kernels, it is ready. This is its day. I remove the husk and place the ear up with air all around it. Within hours, kernels will begin to wrinkle all over the ear. I select the last kernels to begin wrinkling, paint them with a marker, and put the ears up to dry in racks. That is the process that has created Top Hat Corn. 2013 seed is from the F6 generation. Taste selected in the F4 and with two years of taste selection, followed by kernel selection in the F5 and the F6. I have some samples of Top Hat available, and I am looking for seed producers to grow Top Hat corn in 2014. In the Texana, this didn't work so well. With the more variable Anasazi parent, picking the last to dry kernels, even after taste testing, was not leading to gains in sweetness. I suspect that variation in pericarp thickness or in some trait in the Anasazi corn has a larger impact on kernel wrinkling than does sugar content. For Texana, we switched from kernel selection to ear to row selection. <clears throat> ear to row evaluation is a classic method for improving open pollinated crops. It improves on simple mass selection, that is saving the best plants, in that it allows evaluation of the plant by the qualities of its offspring. Planting remnant seed then removes the pollen from inferior plants as well. In the, tuxedo, there were, in the Tuxana, there were about 2,000 plants to choose from. We used that three people, two row tasting method and flagged as in about 600 we chose as sweeter. The primary ear from the chosen plants was flagged and left to mature on the stock. I harvested and checked these ears between two and three weeks past milk stage right. I selected the 600 down to 400 while shucking and down to 300 when dry. I shelled these 300 individually into paper bags. To lay out a grid, I made 10 foot rows with four foot paths and four foot spacing. I used nothing but a 10 foot stake, a four foot stake and a pile of scrap stakes. The area needed to evaluate 300 10 foot rows is about four tenths of an acre. I set up a site grid, jabbing in stakes in the ground in straight lines. Four sticks in a row will create a line that you can follow with a high wheel plow. I used the push plow to create the planting grid. I made a furrow along each crop row, then made furrows perpendicular to the rows to mark the four foot paths. The result is a checkerboard with paths easy to see. <clears throat> I numbered each 10 foot row and fertilized each one with four or five pounds of composted chicken manure. I planted 20 seeds from each, each from one parent in each 10 foot row. What to evaluate for is perhaps the most important decision to make. Too much data and the process becomes unwieldy. We have to get through 300 rows before they get past right. These are the categories that I found useful. Emergence and seedling vigor were rated at 10 to 14 days. Then general stand quality, productivity, appearance of the shuck deer, sweetness, and flavor or eating quality, all rated when the corn is ripe to eat. We rated a few other categories but did not end up using them in our, our decisions. These last five categories were all rated at the same time by a crew of three or four. We harvested, shucked, looked, looked at and tasted at least five years from each mini row and made our, ratings, uh, made our ratings decisions as a group. We used a tablet computer to field enter data onto a 300 line spreadsheet. We did our evaluations using a one to five rating system. Next time I'm gonna use a one to nine system. There's a natural tendency to give a lot of middle ratings. Instead of threes in a one to five system, a one to nine system might generate not just fives, but a mixture of fours, fives, and sixes. It took four mornings for a crew of three or four to evaluate 310 foot mini rows. 
Some mini rows were clearly in or out. We called those in the field while doing the evaluations, flagging the ins and noting both the ins and outs on the spreadsheet. Out of 300 rows, we chose about 70 that were clearly in and 80 that were clearly out while in the field, leaving about 150 maybes. I was seeking to select 100 plants to use in the next generation, so I wanted 30 of the best of these 150 maybes to call in. I reviewed the ratings we'd given the maybes, picked out the higher scoring half, and returned to the field with a list of row numbers. I sampled the remaining years in those rows and chose 30 more ins. I then separated out the 100 numbered bags of remnant seed from the rows we'd called in. One interesting question was in what proportion to mix that remnant seed. One theory says use an equal amount of seed from each ear, that is, take only as much seed from each bag as there is in the lightest bags. This gives the evenest genetic distribution. Another theory says mix all the remnant seed. Producing more seed is good, and it's okay that the distribution's a little unequal. Well, I split the difference. I picked a weight which about 20 of the 100 bags exceeded. I then removed seeds from these heaviest bags down to the selected weight, then mixed the remaining contents of all the in bags together. I hope to grow that remnant Texana seed out next year. And that's the research update. It looks to me like uh, the organic natural methods only farmer or breeder has plenty of options to improve the quality of the seed supply.